cute anime waifus, pretty cool. A buxom, wife-like caring ball of cuteness, or sometimes cute because violent and angriness, coolness, or sick in the headness. This is a nice concept that people often like. Another concept that people like is being lazy and having other people do the things you don't want to. So what if you had a cute anime waifu who loves you to be your surrogate mother? Then we have the hit 2023 anime, The Angel Next Door Spoils Me Rotten. This show is Wholesome Incarnate, a very different rom-com, but serious. Romance, but when it's done the right way. Rent a girlfriend, the good timeline. Yeah, I was just reading the Crunchyroll reviews, but that got me thinking. People actually like this anime? I only ever saw this as another run-of-the-mill, boring high school romance. But then again, all an anime needs to be successful these days is a cute anime girl. So I went in and watched it again with one question in mind. Is The Angel Next Door Spoils Me Rotten a good anime? My name is Noobo Okoa, and let's go find out. And watch till the end because I have some interesting things to say about the relationship. And if you come to agree with me, or just enjoy the content, leave a like and subscribe, it helps out a lot. On a rainy walk home from a mundane day at school, our protagonist Fujimiya Amane sees a lone, crying girl who is drenched from the rain. He gives the girl his umbrella, which in turn renders him sick and helpless the next day. Little side note, but what the fuck is up with Japanese colds? They always really hit like truck-kun. When at school, his friend who doesn't matter at all says, <laughs> Oh, don't you worry, buddy. You will do just fine. Because he finds the same girl from the day before at his front door. The girl, Mahirushina, is a perfect human being. She is an angel. That's what everyone at school calls Mahirushina. She's attractive and graceful, gets excellent grades, and her test scores are top of the class. And she's even good at sports. But she's still humble and modest. She's that kind of angel. Of course she's popular. I'm sure most of the guys in class want to date her. But that's a world I'm not- Oh, the quote's supposed to end there. Yes, everything I just said is a direct quote from the show used to describe her. And making a character flawless like that is ironically a huge flaw. These characters are supposed to be human, but by making her seem like this divine being, that is taken away. The show tries to acknowledge this as a problem by making that a critical flaw of hers. She is just too perfect and she doesn't like when she is called an angel. At least they acknowledge it, but they don't really go into it. They say that she doesn't like being called an angel, and she falls in love with Amane because he didn't call her an angel. But they still treat her like an angel even after that. Also, I refuse to believe that real people would do what everyone seems to do in this show. Who the fuck does that and calls people an angel when referring to someone? If you recall from my last video, this was one of the critical flaws of Your Lie in April. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. I think it was one of my best videos. Kaori and Kosei are just so perfect, and that makes them seem less like humans with flaws and more like... not humans. And this anime does the exact same thing. Mahiru doesn't feel like a human. She feels like a cardboard cutout of what you might imagine a perfect wife to be. Because Amana helped her once before, she wants to help him back when he is sick, so they go into his house, but Mahiru finds that he is a slob. So she then becomes a surrogate mother and takes care of him, cleans for him, cooks for him, picks him up from school, takes him to soccer practice, okay, maybe not the last two, but you get the idea. She spoils him rotten, and they spend every day together since then. There were unexpectedly some things that I liked about this part. The main character didn't make a big deal out of it. Normally, a romance protag would say, Wait, 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 this is the first time a g -g 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 girl is in my house. But here, they are very nonchalant about it, and I really like that. It would have been made even better if Mahiru didn't freak out when he took off his shirt to take his temperature, but I'll let it slide if it's just a one time thing. She cooks food for him, takes care of him, and they go back to school where they'll once again be strangers. And when we saw a bit of what Mahiru is doing during school, my blood started to boil, my gears started to grind, my stomach churned, my- I actually don't know any more ways to say it, but it pissed me off. Mahiru is explaining some schoolwork to some girls, and take a look at how it's done. That easily? I'm the slightly nerdy, not too many friends, not no friends, smart kid who people ask for help sometimes at my school. And let me tell you, it is never as easy as, oh, you just do this, 
Why can't you understand that you just isolate the x by squaring both sides, then move the equation to one side, and then factor? Oh! Yeah, that was really minor, and thanks for listening to me rambling on. Let's go back to the show. The next night, she brings him some food, and then some more, then some more. Then Amane says to her, No, actually. First of all, no one is watching, so who the fuck cares? And two, no one really thinks like that. You could be close friends, have a little deal going on, or made too much food, or just, I don't know, try to poison you or something, or any other excuse really. That even is a really non-human way to think. They clean the house and she trips. He catches her and ends up with her on top of him. But again, they are relatively chill about it and I really like that. And Fujimiya is like that. He isn't a complete asshole, he isn't pathetic, he seems like a chill, reasonable dude. But at the same time, I can't think of a reason the girl might like him. I mean, he is nice, but isn't that a given? And even when he is nice and doesn't call her an angel, he still does. He still has his little jerk moments, but I was okay with it for the most part. It didn't seem like it was out of malintent or stupidity and was just him making a joke. A part that I did have a slight problem with was Mahiru's backstory. She's from a rich family, but that money doesn't come from nowhere. Her parents had to work often and she was raised by her housekeeper. You might be thinking, so what about it? Nothing. That's it. We are only told that she has some problems with family, but it is never really addressed nor is it important. I use this example for a lot of shows, but in Kaguya-sama Love is War, Kaguya's backstory has an actual impact on her life and her attitude towards school, making friends, and love. And being only ever taught to think like a businessman and humans as tools, she struggled. For this story, the two struggles of Shina's family and her being idolized to the point of dehumanization are two completely separate things. And one of them is just not important at all. I think they were going for... I actually have no idea what they could have been going for, but if there's no real purpose, why add it? They could use that extra time to build other characters or the actual cute stuff they do. The cute stuff they did was really hard to sit through. The same way it might be hard to sit through hearing your mom talk about you about your first love when you were a little kid. Because the shit they do is very childish. It is cute sometimes, and I honestly think that they do a good job at portraying what an elementary relationship might look like, but obviously they aren't children, so it comes more off as pure discomfort. I wouldn't be surprised if their confession was, Hey, erm, um, I like you. Like, I like like you. Will you be my girlfriend? Another interpretation for me was even more uncomfortable. They sometimes do things that make Sheena seem like his emoto, and that's... Let's just say, as someone with a little sister, that stuff always makes me uneasy. And there's one final one. She's actually his mother. Besides the stuff I already mentioned, she acts motherly. She normally has a motherly conduct, and she gives him rewards for doing good on tests, with that reward being to lay on his lap to clean his ears. All of that sounds like a mommy. No, like, you know what I meant. No, but seriously, that is all shit my mom does for me. She does the housework, she tells me how crazy I am at school when I do good, she cleans out my ears, that is all things a mother should do, not a random angel next door. And you know how I said earlier that they are pretty nonchalant about things and don't make a big fuss because she is a g g g g girl Yeah, all that goes out the window as the show moves on. When she tries to clean his ears because he asked for it, he hesitates, and reasonably she is questioning him about why he requested it then. Then he says the most unnatural thing I have ever heard. I honestly don't think I've ever heard that phrase used by a real human being. Then, she pats his head and calls him obedient like a pet as he falls asleep. And speaking of childish, when he falls asleep on her lap, she does too. And when he tries to wake her up, she doesn't, so he has to carry her back to her house. Then he says that he will now leave, and her response was, yeah, that means no, but in a very childish way. A more accurate translation would be, I know no wanna. So he leaves a teddy bear next to her and pats her on the head. I have a similar personal anecdote. I fell asleep in a car when I was four, and my dad carried me back into the house. Anyone else? And speaking of Amane acting like Mahiru's father, she also asks him to pat his head from time to time. What? 
Their relationship is somehow similar to every part of a family. Amane Shida's dad, son, brother, husband, and dog. Washina is his mom, daughter, sister, and wife. Because of all the will they won't they bullshit, I wanted to say just kith. But I also can't because of how their relationship is. And honestly, all of the plot points seem like a setup for a hentai. Sister, mother, daughter, yeah. The ending of the show was one that I didn't expect, because I thought that it was just another filler. It was a sports festival. Nothing happens, and they play Gimme Gimme, and the prompt for it was someone special. And you already know what happens. They choose each other as a person, and then they confess later, and yes, it was as sudden as I make it seem to be. And so, who's best girl? Is it the only girl who also can play any character ever? No. The real best girl of the show is Couch Chan. She was always there through thick and thin and just had so much about her that piqued my interest. So congratulations to Couch Chan for the title of best girl in The Angel Next Door spoils me rotten. And to answer the first question, is this a good anime? I think that it has decent characters and ideas, but it is in the wrong genre. If it wasn't a romance, and instead a slice of life about two friends with that kind of relationship, or just go all in and make it an ecchi or hentai, it would have unironically been better. And so, there you have it. Now you know a complete online stranger's opinion on this anime. It was time well spent though. My name is Noobo Okoa, you should go tell your family how much you love them, not romantically though, and thanks for watching. And if you like like liked this video, you do things that you might like this one too. You can also watch this video of me talking about how totally definitely good and not trash your lion April is. Again, thank you for watching.